November 22nd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 2 Peter chapter 2 from the New Testament But false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. These false teachers will infiltrate your midst with destructive heresies, even to the point of denying the master who bought them. As a result, they will bring swift destruction on themselves, and many will follow their debauched lifestyles. Because of these false teachers, the way of truth will be slandered, and in their greed they will exploit you with deceptive words. Their condemnation, pronounced long ago, is not sitting idly by. Their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but threw them into hell and locked them up in chains and utter darkness, to be kept until the judgment, and if he did not spare the ancient world, but did protect Noah, a herald of righteousness, along with seven others, when God brought a flood on an ungodly world, as if he turned to ashes the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah when he condemned them to destruction, having appointed them to serve as an example to future generations of the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man in anguish, over the debauched lifestyle of lawless men, for while he lived among them day after day, that righteous man was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from their trials and to reserve the unrighteous for punishment at the day of judgment, especially those who indulge their fleshly desires and who despise authority. Brazen and insolent, they are not afraid to insult the glorious one. Yet even angels, who are much more powerful, do not bring a slanderous judgment against them before the Lord. But these men, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, do not understand whom they are insulting, and consequently in their destruction they will be destroyed, suffering harm as the wages for their harmful ways. By considering it a pleasure to carouse in broad daylight, they are stains and blemishes, indulging in their deceitful pleasures when they feast together with you. Their eyes full of adultery never stop sinning. They entice unstable people. They have trained their hearts for greed, these cursed children. By forsaking the right path, they have gone astray, because they followed the way of Balaam, son of Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, yet was rebuked for his own transgression a dumb donkey speaking with a human voice, restrained the prophet's madness. These men are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm, for whom the utter depths of darkness have been reserved. For by speaking high-sounding but empty words they are able to entice, with fleshly desires and with debauchery, people who have just escaped from those who reside in error. Although these false teachers promise such people freedom, they themselves are enslaved to immorality, for whatever a person succumbs to, to that he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped the filthy things of the world, through the rich knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again get entangled in them and succumb to them, their last state has become worse for them than their first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn back from the holy commandment that had been delivered to them. They are illustrations of this true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a so after washing herself wallows in the mire. God, it's so hard to watch the false teachers of our day. I have no doubt that we've always had false teachers way back when they just seem to be coming more and more. And, and I do realize that that's biblical. It's part of the end of times, whether that's coming soon or in the future. Uh, but because of the way that our society functions, where we give fame to people with no talent, <laughs> whether that be in Hollywood or sports or singing or, or whatever, whatever it is, we also do the same type of thing uh, in the so-called Christian world. And, you know, I think of, of some of the people, even in our area, who run mega churches, you know, and they fly between their churches in helicopters to different services, and they have fancy cars, and they have great, they have the biggest houses in town, and, 
And I'm just, I'm truly scared for them because not only do they know the truth, they are intentionally choosing not to share the truth with other people. And, and this chapter is very clear about what it, what will happen to them and what you will do to them based upon what you've done to other people in that same situation or similar situations. God, I pray for their congregations today. Their mega churches, they are attracting the multitudes to their nice conversations. You know, it's sort of like some of the prophets we've heard. Uh, they were really struggling because they were having to say the truth, which is not what people wanted to hear. They wanted all the nice stuff, the good stuff, the happy stuff, the motivational stuff. They didn't want to hear the truth. Um, so these mega churches can easily attract with a, a flashy speaker, a flashy pastor, uh, with some motivational uh, speeches and some some great light shows and a great worship team, they can attract these multitudes of people. And one of my favorite pastors, Pastor uh, Francis Chan, actually walked away from his mega church for those reasons. Um, he's like, this is, this is not what Jesus would have if he had a church here. He wouldn't have these huge fancy buildings. He wouldn't have people who the clothes that they're wearing is worth more than most people in third world countries get for an entire year. Um, he actually walked away from that situation and has now moved into kind of as pure as you can get having to do with church where they literally meet together uh, as a congregation for a few minutes, then go out on the street and talk to people about you and uh, then come back and, and share basically dinner together which is uh, easy to find those same type of processes in the bible whereas our church today especially here in the united states doesn't doesn't even look like that i wonder i wonder if your son came back today if he would even recognize what we call church i don't know it's really easy god to pick out the the false teachers in our society even though so many people follow them it's really easy to pick them out i think it's a little bit harder to pick out all the in between the subtle uh, changes that we have allowed to make the world happy and the people in the world happy uh, to allow them to feel comfortable to come to the church all these allowances that we've made for people to hear about you and so I don't know what that fine line is. I know there is one, but I don't know what that fine line is where we are doing what you want us to do at a church versus also trying to make people feel comfortable so they can come to church and learn about you. Uh, I, I'm i really blessed because I get to go to a church that preaches almost directly out of a Bible. Um, the church service is more Bible verses than it is <laughs> anything else. So it's it's crazy awesome. Uh, and it's wonderful to have you there and working in the different ministries and, and all the work that that gets done within our community, within the United States and then within other countries. So I love that. And we try really hard to follow the steps that you've put in the Bible uh, for how people should meet, what church should look like. But even then, I think that we still go overboard in, in making people feel comfortable in church. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, God. I know that I know that you must be incredibly upset with especially the American church right now. But the one thing I do ask for is individually, since we're talking a lot about personal responsibility in, in all the different books of Peter, um, allow my life to be on track for what you need it to be. Uh, take out anything that is a gray area in my life and allow me to be black and white in my faith that... I am all in. I am on fire for you. I am following you. And all of these other things that are worldly things, that they just fall away from my world. I want my life to be reflective of you, God. I want my worship to be pure and about you. I want at the end of my life for people to not remember me, but remember everything that you did for me. Uh, everything in my life, the ways that you changed me, the the things that you put me through so I could learn things. That's what I want people to remember. And God, I don't ever want to head into this area where I could be called a, a false teacher that 
that you would actually question things that I'm teaching out of your word or how I'm living my life. And if it ever comes to that, God, then I just want you to be very strict with me and and show me those things and, and allow me the strength to remove those things from my life. And God, if those false teachers need to stick around for reasons that ultimately glorify you through uh, their destruction, uh, through people leaving their church and, and finding the truth, whatever that looks like, then just allow that to happen. If there's other people out there that are, are false teachers, God, allow them to see the truth and, and share that with their congregations. Can you imagine a pastor of a, of a mega church who's found the truth and is able to share that with all those people? Gosh, such a powerful testimony. God, I thank you for being in control. Even though I get really agitated at false teachers and the fame that goes along with them and, and prosperity doctrine and how frustrating it is to watch people stand up for, for learning that in their church. Ultimately, I know that you're in control. And it's that that I hold on to. Whatever part I need to play in that, whatever I need to say or whatever I need to do or whatever my actions need to be, God, just guide my steps and provide the strength to do what I need to do. In your son's name I pray. Amen.